Hi everyone, my name is Aaron, and today I wanted to showcase a project I worked on a while ago. One of my interests for a long time has been terrain generation because of the possibilities that provides for creating environments, also because I hate designing environments myself. So I stumbled across a tutorial series on how to create simple procedural terrain by Sebastian Lake that I'll link in the description. While the method showcased in that video worked well as an introduction, his later video on hydraulic erosion really sparked my interest. Hydraulic erosion is meant to transform simple procedural terrain into a more realistic environment by simulating natural water movement and sediment transfer. Sebastian's video on the topic was great, but the algorithm he used was a particle-based one, where each water droplet is simulated individually and requires tens of thousands of iterations to run. The other major method which I wanted to explore is grid-based, where water content is stored at each vertex and transferred based on the height map. I found that with my method, it only takes about 10 iterations of erosion to achieve good results. But before we get to that, we need to start with some initial and simple procedural terrain. Here in my demo, I can set the randomizer seed, the number of layers of noise, the height, amplitude, and the level of effect each noise layer has on the final terrain. This terrain is generated using Perlin noise, a smooth noise algorithm that I talked about in more detail in my last video. But generally what you need to know is that Perlin noise generates a random set of values that rise and fall in a much smoother way than something like Gaussian noise, which is uniformly random. Perlin noise can be used in one or multiple dimensions, and here we're using two to generate a height map on the XY plane. By combining multiple sets of Perlin noise with different levels of detail, you can generate a semi-realistic height map for terrain. This is the paper that defines the algorithm we'll be working with, titled Eroded Terrain Simulation Based on Improved Hydraulic Erosion Algorithm, which I'll also link in the description. Before diving into the actual algorithm, I want to show its results. As shown in my demo, after 10 erosion iterations, we transform terrain that's clearly randomly generated into one with defined peaks, valleys, and plateaus, something that could be mistaken for real if you had a thick pair of glasses and squinted pretty hard. Now we can mess with these values, erode different terrain in different ways, and see what happens. Now that we've seen what it can do, let's go through the algorithm that's defined in page 2 of the paper. Before beginning, it's important to add a set amount of water content to each vertex, otherwise running the algorithm will do nothing. The algorithm is defined looking at the vertices V and any of its neighbors U. The vertex U is a single vertex, but the algorithm is repeated for all eight neighbors of V. The first step is to find the amount of water transferred from V to U at each iteration, called delta W. We'll look at the simplest case here where the total height of vertex V, which is the height of V plus the height of the water at V, is less than the total height at U. I've drawn here a sort of a bar graph, vertices V and U, where red is their base height and blue is their water content. In this case, no water is transferred between the vertices because it can't travel uphill. But as defined in the second part of the algorithm, because the water is stationary, some amount of the sediment contained in the water at V is deposited at the vertex, increasing its base height. The code keeps track of the amount of sediment at each vertex during each iteration. It starts at zero, but can be accumulated over each iteration with later parts of the algorithm. But what if the total height of V is greater than the total height of U? In this case, some water is transferred from vertex V to vertex U. It ends up being the minimum between the total water at V and the difference between the total heights of V and U. More simply, it tries to transfer enough water from V to U to make their total heights equal. If it can't do that because there's not enough water at V, it just gives U all the water it can. In addition, based on a user set sediment capacity value, some of the sediment at V is transferred to U. There's a possibility that when transferring sediment from V to U, the water is able to carry more sediment than is suspended in the water at V. 
When this happens, a small portion of the difference between the desired sediment and the available sediment is removed from the base height of V. This is where the real erosion part of the algorithm takes place. Finally, at the end of every iteration, a portion of the sediment suspended at every vertex is deposited at that vertex, raising its height slightly. In the paper, the authors identify a few ideas for improvements to the algorithm. One that I found to be very important is an evaporation constant. This value controls the rate at which water is removed from our closed system. I've set it to 0.2 because that's given me the best results. I found that removing evaporation by setting the value to 0 leads to bumpy and pitted terrain, while too high a value leads to very little erosion taking place. The antithesis to evaporation, rain, is also mentioned as a potential improvement to the algorithm. I've implemented it here as a third section of the demo. This starts with no water on each vertex, but adds a small amount of water uniformly on each iteration. I've included the ability to perform multiple erosion iterations for every time a sheet of rain falls on the terrain, but I've found that having rain immediately follow each erosion iteration works the best. Together with the evaporation constant, the rain produces, in my opinion, the best looking and most realistic terrain in this demo. Additionally, I like that you can see it happen in real time. But by messing with the parameters and increasing the number of rain iterations, you can get some unnaturally smooth terrain that probably isn't ideal for any use case. So that's my hydraulic erosion demo. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it. If there are any points that I didn't explain well enough or that you're confused about, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to help. I've put links to all the resources I mentioned in the description, as well as a link to the GitHub repo with my code for this project and an executable if you want to play around with the parameters yourself. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.